Alright guys, so today we're going to be doing touching number 30 and we're just going to, as always, start where I left off. Uh, so the first thing that I have is a 17 piece makeup lot. This was just stuff that I had from my personal collection. I sold that for $19.99. It was just a mixed lot of stuff that I just never used. Um, I, if you guys know me at all you know i'm obsessed with beauty products i love makeup and cosmetics and just beauty products in general so i have like a lot of stuff in my collection that i just don't use so i'm trying to get rid of some of it um so that's that <laughs> the next thing i have is a betsy johnson clutch i sold this for ten dollars and 99 cents i picked this up at goodwill um, and I probably paid about $1.99 for it. Uh, next I have, this was a new old stock. Um, it was called, the brand was called Cowgirl Up. So it was like a western wear shirt uh, made of corduroy and had the um, pearl snap buttons. And that sold for $29.99. I like picking up like western type clothing. I think it does sell decently um i got this at a yard sale quite a while back um i can't remember exactly what i paid for it i think it was like a fill a bag style yard sale so it's hard to say but probably a dollar or less um if you'd average it out uh next this item actually went to a subscriber it was a vintage wendy's where's the beef kitchen towel i found this at a yard sale i purchased three of them and i feel like they were either 50 cents a piece or a dollar a piece. Um, the other two that I have do have a little bit of staining on them, so I haven't listed them yet. Um, I haven't tried to clean those yet, um, but once I do, if I can get the marks out, then I will list those as well. Uh, but that sold for $14.99, and I just thought that it was so unique. I had never seen these before um, in my life, so... I just thought that they would be kind of a hoot um, just to get a laugh out of. And some people do also collect advertising pieces as well. Uh, next I have a men's Abercrombie and Fitch sweater. This sold for $16.99. And this was probably um, from like a fill-a-bag rummage sale is what I would say. And when I, when I say I get stuff from like a fill-a-bag rummage sale, I tend to just say it was a dollar um but i mean if you average out what i pay for the bag and how much stuff i put in my bag it's probably less than a dollar that i paid for it uh, next was a fossil purse that sold for $29.99 i love fossil it's a brand that i myself like to carry um, i did get this purse at a yard sale and i'm pretty sure i paid five dollars for it um, I liked it, but it just wasn't, um, I, I prefer, like with my fossil bags, I prefer them to be all leather, and this one was, was leather, but also had like a canvas, um, or cloth type look to it as well, so I decided to sell that. This next item was just really weird and odd, and I like picking up really weird and odd things. I'm just naturally drawn to them. So this was a vintage, like, water game. It was called The Hooker. <laughs> the Hooker Water Game. This sold for $9.99, and I got this at a yard sale. Um, I probably paid maybe a quarter for it, possibly 10 cents. I can't remember. I know it was barely anything. But basically, you kind of just had to, like, shake the toy <laughs> uh, around to <laughs> get to the little ring on um, the hook, essentially. Uh, next, I sold a St. John belt. This was really exciting. I was so excited when I found this at a yard sale. I only paid $1 for it at the yard sale. I still remember um, finding it and just being blown away because it was the first time I had ever found a St. John item while yard selling or thrifting. Um, and that sold for $55.99 and I paid $1 for it. So that was amazing. Uh, next was a pair of Juicy Couture sandals. Those sold for $19.99 and I got those at a yard sale a long time ago. <laughs> I was sitting on these sandals for years. I feel like I've had these 
for years and I just didn't understand that. I thought they were like the prettiest sandals ever. They weren't my size, but I just thought they were so cute and I just couldn't sell them. I just couldn't sell them for the life of me. Um, I feel like I maybe paid like $5 for them at the yard sale. At the time, Juicy Couture, um, I think wasn't quite being sold in Kohl's yet. So it was still... I would say consider like a high-end brand um, but once <laughs> once brands hit like uh, big name stores I just feel like um, the quality goes down on them and just like the the want for them really because once something becomes readily available for everyone it doesn't have that exclusivity as um, other brands have so um, you know, I do still sometimes pick up Juicy Couture items, but I don't get as excited about them as I once did um, while being a reseller. Um, next was a set of two Newport matches. These were new old stock as well, and I think these were in another Chiching. Eric had picked up like a whole box of these at a yard sale, and he's been trying to sell them as lots of two. Um, I think we have these listed at $9.99, but he also, I think, has best offer on them, so he took an offer of $8. Um, so, I mean, they're selling. They're not selling quickly. They're definitely something that um, is probably going to be a slow sell, um, but they are, they are selling. Uh, next was a pair of Gap jeans. This kind of surprised me. They sold for $19.99. I think that's pretty good for um, Gap. Uh, it, Gap is not like a brand that I feel like is a really great reseller for me. So that was an exciting sale. And those probably again came from like a fill -a bag rummage sale. Um, next was a, this was called a Q-Ray Cuff. Um, I guess it has some sort of like ionized magnetic type thingy inside of it. I don't know exactly how it works. I found this at my parents house though and I just decided to look it up while I was cleaning and going through stuff over there and I saw that they were selling, some of them were selling decently so I just decided to um, try and sell it and that sold for $19.99 and I feel like mom might have purchased that for my dad off of like maybe a um like television advertisement or like a mail-in kind of thing so I'm not sure what she originally paid for it um, or if they really work I have no idea uh, next was a set of vintage Holt Howard uh, pear-shaped salt and pepper shakers those sold for $12.99 and I got those at a yard sale and I probably paid about a dollar for them this next item was so cute. I absolutely loved it. So it was this piece of resin, um, this clear resin, and there was this tiny little speck of like legit, legitimate bull poopy inside of it. And it said bull on the top and then obviously the poopy, you know what the poopy is. Um, so it was just so funny and quirky and cute and I fell in love with it when I saw it. Um, that sold for $9.99. I got that at a yard sale. I probably paid less than a dollar for it and I had no idea until I went to um, print out my shipping label but my cousin actually purchased this from me so that was super fun. She said she gave it to her husband um, to sit on his desk so I thought that was really awesome that you know it was a family member that purchased it from me. Uh, next was a vintage John Deere mesh trucker hat. I picked this up at a yard sale for $1 and sold it for $59.99. So when I bought this and I bought another one at the same time, a uh, John Deere trucker hat. And the John Deere trucker hats, I always read that, um, you know, they sold really well. And at the time I wasn't sure if it was vintage. Um, but when I got home and I researched it, I found out that it was. So that was a really exciting score. And I'm glad I didn't just decide to not get it because I wasn't 
you know, entirely sure if it was vintage. So I still have another one as well to sell that's slightly different. I sold another fossil item. This one was a wallet that sold for $18.99 and obviously came from a yarn sale. And I probably paid a dollar for it. Next was a Wilton. This was a 3D like Easter egg cake mold. It was brand new in the box. Um, that sold for $19.99. And this actually, my dad gave this to me a long time ago. Um, one of the places that he had last worked where um, he had retired from, um, he was able to go into like the employee store and they had an employee store and was able to like buy things at a really like discounted price. So that's where that came from. And I never used it and I never really planned on using it. Um, when I do bake cakes, they're just like traditionally shaped. I don't really like go all crazy and do like the mold thing. Um, so yeah, I decided to sell that. Uh, next was that baby doll you guys saw I had picked up at a yard sale. It was by a company called Berenguer. Um, goodness gracious, I don't remember what I paid for that doll. Was it $3? I feel like it was maybe $3 or $4. Um, that sold for $19.99 and it did go to a subscriber. Um, I just was really like drawn to the doll. I found it looked so realistic. Um, and I know like some like reborn type dolls are very, very expensive. Um, so yeah, if you ever do come across like the crazy, crazy realistic looking ones, um, I don't really know like the brand names of the Reborn dolls, but I know that they are very expensive dolls. Uh, next was an Athleta skirt that sold for $12.99. And this either came from a rummage sale, like a fill bag rummage sale, or possibly the Goodwill bins. I'm not entirely sure where I picked that up. Uh, next was a vintage set of Alice in Wonderland cards. I'm not even quite sure exactly what these were, like if they were some type of game or something like that, but they were really beautifully detailed. They were so pretty. I had these kind of like in my collection, I guess you'd say, like I held on to them for a while, like I didn't sell them because I liked looking at them so much. They were so pretty. Uh, they sold for $18.99 and I got them at a yard sale. It was a long time ago and I can't remember. Um, what I paid, but it was definitely no more than a dollar. Next was a Rue 21 perfume in the scent Midnight Sparkle that sold for $39.99. So this is an instance of a fragrance that's no longer made. So when you think of Rue 21, um, it's not like a high-end brand or anything like that, but it doesn't necessarily matter once a fragrance or something is discontinued. Um, because once it is and it's harder to find, people are more willing to pay um, more for the item. So that was a great sale and I probably got that at a yard sale for a dollar. Um, next was a book. Um, this book was called Haunted by Chuck. I can never pronounce his last name. Chuck Palahniuk. Um, that sold for $9.99, and I got that for free from a Curb Alert. Um, I remember that day I had gotten a couple of his books, and I think, I think I sold all of them. I read them first, and then I sold them. <laughs> um, okay, next was, where am I? A J. Crew t-shirt that had a reindeer on it. That sold for $15.99. And that also came from a curb alert. It was free, so I didn't pay anything for that. The next item is the most expensive thing I sold for this cha-ching, and that was a cast iron Griswold Dutch oven. This sold for $279.99, which is beyond amazing. Um, cast iron is very hot to people. People love it, and Griswold is definitely a brand to look out for if you do come across any kind of cast iron um, pots and pans or anything like that. Um, this actually belonged to my parents. Um, 
one year when I was having a yard sale, this was after my mom passed, um, but dad was still here and he came with some stuff from the house to sell at the yard sale and he came with this Dutch oven and he had a $20 <laughs> yard sale price sticker on it and I was like, dad, you are not selling that for $20 at the yard sale. It is worth so much more than $20. The person who buys that for $20 is going to have a heart attack. Like, you can't do it. I said, I'm buying it from you for $20. I'll take it. And then I had all intents and purposes of selling the Dutch oven and then giving him like half the money for it since, you know, I purchased it from him, but it did originally belong to them and I wanted to help him out. But obviously it didn't work out that way. I did not get a chance to give him the money for that. Um, but I sold for a lot of money, so I don't think I'd ever come across one of those <laughs> at any kind of cheap price while thrifting or yard selling, but who knows? Um, someone potentially could have <laughs> had they come to the yard sale and me not realize Dad brought it down and put a $20 yard sale sticker on it. Uh, next was a pair of Clark's ankle booties. These sold for $29.99 and I have a hard time thinking, like remembering where I got my Clark's shoes because sometimes I pick them up at yard sales and only pay like usually $5 or less or you know I do sometimes buy them at thrift stores and potentially pay like seven, no more than seven. Um, seven forty seven if you want to be specific um so it's hard to say where those ones came from i can't remember uh but you should know by now i like picking up clarks i don't pick up every single pair of clarks i see uh, but i do like picking them up uh next is a vintage fisher price activity blanket this sold for 19 dollars and 99 cents and probably got that at a yard sale for a dollar I sold a kid's hunter rain jacket for $19.99 and I got this at a yard sale. I did pay $2 for it, um, but I knew hunter was um, a brand that people people like. Um, it's definitely a higher end brand. This was hunter for Target. Um, I've never actually, well I did find hunter rain boots at a yard sale once before, but they wanted too much. Um, for me to potentially resell them. Usually the hunter things that I do find at yard sales are the stuff that came out specifically for Target. Um, next was a pair of Doc Martens 8i uh, combat boots. I paid, I believe, $4 for these at a yard sale and sold them for $99.99. If you see Doc Martens, just pick them up just pick them up um every single pair i've purchased has sold i think i have one pair still still listed but everything else that i have ever uh, picked up to resell has sold and has sold for a great great price um obviously i think the combat boots will you know fetch you especially the leather ones um not the vegan leather but like the real true leather ones will fetch you the most money um and then obviously if they are just different not just like a plain solid color but have like a design to them or something like that then they'll probably fetch even more than that um but yeah so <laughs> whenever i see doc martens i definitely pick them up because they're really expensive boots to begin with um next was a pair of enzo angie Loney rhinestone heels these things were absolutely gorgeous I could never in a million years walk in them. Um, I can't walk in heels. I am so clumsy. I can barely just walk, period. Um, even while barefoot, I've broken toes. Just, you don't even want to know. Anyway, um, these sold for $35.99. And these came from Goodwill. And I did pay, I believe, $7.47 for them. But I just thought they were so pretty. I could not just let them sit. They did take a little while to sell, trying to find like the right perfect buyer for them, but found the perfect buyer for them. Uh, next was a mini vintage Chloe 
how do you pronounce this word? Narcisse? Narcissi? Uh, perfume. This sold for $29.99. And I got that at a yard sale. I'd say I spent a dollar or less on that. Um, you guys know I love selling vintage perfume, but even these miniature size bottles are still really highly collectible. So if you see them and you think, well, it's such a small bottle of perfume, who's really going to spend a lot of money on it? That's not necessarily the case because people who collect, specifically collect the miniature versions of perfumes are willing to spend a little more for them. Not only if the fragrance is discontinued, but also because they're collecting the mini sized bottle of that fragrance. Uh, next was a Torrid Skull and Key Top. I just purchased this at Goodwill not that long ago. It sold for $25.99 and I do believe the shirts at Goodwill are $4 and some change. And then the next item was also purchased the same day that I bought that top was another Torrid top from the same Goodwill. Um, this one was uh, by Rebel Wilson for Torrid. It was a button down like denim chambray um, top that sold for $29.99. And again, I paid like four and some change for it love picking up torrid um it typically sells for me there are some things that don't um or i have a hard time selling but for the most part um it sells pretty easily uh next was a set of napco wear vintage these had like the spaghetti trim uh, mr and mrs santa claus these were candle uh huggers and these came from one of the like vintage Christmas mystery boxes I got for free from a curb alert. Um, I sold those for $19.99. So again, I did not pay anything for them. Next was a coach pouch. This was just kind of like a makeup bag or clutch. You could probably use it for whatever. And it had like the coach creed on the, on the uh, front of it. That's over $25.99 and I got that at a yard sale and I'm pretty sure I paid $5 for it. Uh, the next thing was a set of two Primacy leave-in conditioners that sold for $19.99 and these came from a church sale. Um, and I remember when I picked them up, I was thinking they were that brand Pharmacy. Like I kept hearing about this like new brand called Pharmacy, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was some brand called Framacy. But regardless, they still sold. Um, next was a vintage Halloween sweater that sold for $19.99. Um, it was black and orange and had these really cool buttons going down the front and I think I put in my title like ugly Halloween sweater because you know the whole ugly Christmas sweater thing was so popular um I decided to try and um get this vintage Halloween sweater and put like ugly Halloween sweater I don't know if ugly Halloween sweater parties are a thing or not but if they're not they should be um next was a vintage this was just a little square like rice bowl it was by a company called gumps and that sold for twelve dollars and 99 cents i got that at a yard sale and i think i paid like 50 cents for it maybe a quarter this next thing i got from goodwill it was this really awesome um pottery wall art um it was depicting the three ages of man that sold for $69.99. I'm pretty sure I spent like $10 or so for that at Goodwill. They had it priced kind of high, but I just thought it was so unique, well-made, and interesting. And yeah, it sold. It took a while for that to sell, but it did sell. Next item went to a subscriber as well. This was an Old Spice shaving mug. That sold for $14.99. And Eric and I recently picked this up at a yard sale. I think in our video we got it off the quarter table. And I know I've said in my last cha-ching, because I think I had um, an Old Spice mug in my last cha-ching, that every Old Spice mug, a uh, shaving mug, that I've listed has sold. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. 
there's a lot of people that like vintage just shaving things in general like the vintage even like the shaving brushes and um, razors and stuff like that uh, next was a Waterford Christmas ornament. Eric picked this up at a yard sale for $5. It was brand new in the box and that sold for $45.99. I've never, um, well I shouldn't say that. I have one other Waterford um, Christmas ornament listed. It's just this really tiny little mini glass hand blown Christmas tree. That has not sold yet but that was the first like really large Waterford ornament um, we've ever found. Next was a vintage 1986 Barbie and the Rockers play set. This sold for $25.99 and I got this at a yard sale and I believe I paid 50 cents for it or a dollar. It was still in the box. All of the pieces were there and a lot of the pieces were still sealed in their plastic baggies. So that's awesome. Finding Finding vintage toys that are still, like, at least somewhat sealed, I think is so rare um, and so much fun, though. Like, how do you not play with that as a child? I'd never be able to, as a kid, uh, hang on to a toy and not open it and play with it. Our next item was, and this, I don't know if you guys saw the video where I purchased this. It was at a church, um, kind of like rummage sale. Um, type yard sale and it was this little teddy bear and she had on a black velvet um, what looked like a robe with a white lace collar and it was right around the time when um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg had passed away and I told Eric I said this bear reminds me of her and it makes me wonder that like if I pick it up if I put that in my title you know describing in the description it's not actually like her bear or anything like that but just you know a look-alike type thing if it would sell and he said no he said <laughs> he said I don't think anyone is going to buy it well someone did I put her up I think on auction and she sold for $18.50 so that just goes to show you <laughs> if someone else says no don't ever go by what someone else says if you have a feeling you have a hunch if you think that it will just go with your gut um next was a Ralph Lauren thermal this was just a sleep shirt um, that sold for nine dollars and ninety nine cents and I do believe that was from a full of bag rummage sale as well uh, this next item was a pair of Converse these were old these vintage high tops um, those sold for $19.99. I got them at a thrift store. I feel like I paid less than $5 for them. Um, considering the condition, if you ever find um, these older Converse uh, shoes, um, if they're in better condition, I definitely feel like they sell way better than the $19.99 uh, mine went for. Um, just because mine weren't in like the best condition. Um, this sold through the eBay's global shipping program. So if you are a reseller and you don't use GSP, I definitely suggest you think about doing it because um, there are three, three sales that I have in this chiching that were all through GSP. So international um, customers were able to purchase the items. I used to originally um just ship international orders myself i would print out the customs forms and just do it all myself but since ebay started this whole global shipping program when an international buyer purchases your item you ship your item to a um, warehouse within the united states that ebay handles so when they get the item they i do believe repackage it I think they repackage it. I'm not, I cannot say for sure exactly if they do. And then ship it to the, the buyer um, who originally purchased it. So those Converse went somewhere overseas. Um, next item was a men's red cologne. I think this was by Giorgio Beverly Hills. That sold for $15.99. And that's one that belonged to my father. 
I think I explained in one one of my other videos that he had so many colognes. He was obsessed with colognes and body sprays and stuff like that. Like I am obsessed with perfumes. So I pretty much just kept one of his bottles and that, that was it. Same with my mom. Well, I kept a couple bottles of my mother's, not just the one. Um, next was a Lush shower gel. This is the 29 High Street scent shower gel. Um, I sold this for $39.99 and this was part of my own personal collection. Um, I had gotten this recently from a Lush subscription box. I already have a bottle. Um, I love the fragrance, but I have it in perfume form and I rather, I rather wear the scent as a perfume than a shower gel, if that makes sense. And if you guys don't know the Lush brand or anything like that, it definitely has a huge cult following. Um, people collect it, I collect it, and yeah, I just, I love it. I have a whole other channel just dedicated to Lush that's down in my description box if anyone um, is interested. Uh, next was a VHS tape of The Wicker Man. I've never actually watched this movie. Um, I do believe it is a horror movie. Um, it sold for $13.99 and I picked that up at a fill -a bag rummage sale. The next item was a plush. This was called um, Klepto Cats. I got this at Goodwill for $0.99 cents and it sold for $19.99. I had this like I had a hold of this because sometimes I buy things and I just keep them for myself and this was one of those things I just fell in love with it um so I decided to sell it though I go through phases where like I hang on to things for a while and then I'm like Michelle you don't really need this sprinkly cupcake looking chubby cat like you just don't need it so then I, I'll sell it same with like some of the stuff you see behind me um I did have like that Japan piggy bank um sitting over here on my my vanity and I listed that that's currently listed um but I've I've been hanging on to it because I thought it was really pretty and then I was like I'm not using it it's just sitting there so <laughs> I decided to list it uh, next was those um that lot of vintage flocked Santa Claus floral picks um these sold for $29.99 and I got these at a yard sale I can't remember like I bought a bunch of stuff at that yard sale um, and I can't remember what I spent so it's hard to say exactly what I spent for these because I bought so much other stuff there but if you guys remember that video do you remember when I was digging through the box and I was like taking the Santa pics and some lady comes and starts trying to like grab them out of the box real fast while I'm trying to get them um, so yeah but they sold and they sold really well um, and then the last thing for this chiching was a Little Mermaid Ariel tote. This was, I don't know if I mentioned, the Lush Shower Gel was also one of the GSP items. And this Little Mermaid tote, again, was another GSP item. Uh, that sold for $20.49 and I got that at a yard sale. I think I paid a dollar for it. And it was so sweet and I'll include a picture. Um, the person who purchased it from me sent me a picture of it they were so happy and you could see in the background like they definitely collected Little Mermaid stuff so that was really awesome because and that's another reason why I say to make sure you're accepting GSP um, customers because you know where they live they might not be able to get um, what you know you have for sale there and wherever they live so um, you definitely could potentially potentially be <laughs> losing out on customers and then in my last cha-ching we talked a little bit about um I wouldn't call it drama but just like um a problem that has arisen that is eBay related and I said that if there is um, ever a problem with something that comes up in any of my chichings when I go to record I would let you guys know so there was something I felt like I would just mention here it wasn't a huge thing but I did just want to talk about it um, so I sold this little it was an earring and matching uh, pin set I got 
I got them at a yard sale. Um, I think I paid like a quarter or 50 cents. They came in a, an old Sarah Coventry box, right? So when I listed it, I clearly stated in the description that they were um, in a Sarah Coventry box, but that I could not say for sure if they actually were Sarah Coventry. It's just, you know, how I originally purchased them. But there was no Sarah Coventry stamps on either the earrings or the pin. So I listed it. I thought I was pretty clear with the listing. You know what I mean? That they're not necessarily Sarah Coventry. They're just coming in a Sarah Coventry box. So I sold them for $12.99 and I had gotten a message from the person who purchased them and they were not happy with their purchase. They said that they were not Sarah Coventry and that they were pretty much junk and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I responded back that I thought that I was pretty clear that, you know, with my description and everything like that, and, and my pictures as well, I had clear pictures of the backs of them, you know, where obviously there was no stamp of Sarah Coventry and that kind of thing. So I was like, you know, you can ship them back and I will give a refund for them. That's fine. Um, so I, they initiated the return and I accepted and had eBay mail them a shipping label so that they could ship it back to me. And they ended up just closing, closing the case. Um, I don't know if they just decided that it wasn't worth their time to, to ship it back. Um, I mean, I paid for the shipping label, so it's not like they had to pay for anything. Um, and you know, but they just, they never, they never sent them, sent them back. They just kind of closed out the case. So, um, you know, it didn't affect me at all, but other than the fact that, like, you know, I was upset that they were upset, but at the same time, I was kind of a little bit like, why didn't they <laughs> read the auction a little bit more clear? And maybe that's why they decided to close it out, because they maybe realized that they didn't read um, it clearer. But then I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't even have included the box, because since they weren't Sarah Coventry, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to mislead people with things, but I would just figure that they would, you know, read descriptions. So that was just kind of like <laughs> the latest um, little instance that happened. It was like nothing really, but um, just something that sometimes happens where, you know, a buyer may not um, completely look at pictures clearly or read a description. So if they're unhappy with it, um, you know, you have to accept returns. There's no, there's no not being able to accept returns on eBay. That's an unfortunate thing. Um, you know, it's, it's about pleasing the buyer. So if they're unhappy, you have to make them happy. You have to do whatever you can to make them happy, even if they were in the wrong or did something wrong. Um, that's just the, the way of business goes is to keep the customer happy. So, um, but like I said, had they have sent it back, I would have given them the refund. So I'm just not quite sure, you know, what, what changed their mind if they were so unhappy and thought, you know, it was junk or whatever. Um, but yeah, that is everything for this cha-ching. You have to let me know what you thought down in the comments and I will see you later.